today we are here to discuss recall questions from fmg june 2021 examination for the subject community medicine myself dr deepa gupta psm mentor at mist next if we see there are about 41 questions asked from the psm subject out of those 41 3 4 questions could be the overlapping questions between pediatrics and biochemistry now these are recall questions so exact language may not be what has been asked in the examination options may not be exactly the same which has been asked in the examination but we can have an idea that from which high yield topics the questions has been asked and what type of questions are asked in this examination so let's start discussing questions now first question complications seen with mumps and we all know that it is epididymo or chitis and we had clearly discussed this topic in our live classes online classes as well as in our missed next app about the complications happening because of mumps infection as in children there is possibility of pancreatitis ophritis or or chitis seen in post pubertal or adults and there is encephalitis or meningitis is also seen so these are few complications of mumps infection now next question is a 5 year old child presented to the clinic with complaints of fever swelling in the neck giving bull neck appearance and the image has been given clearly showing the bull neck appearance and the diagnosis is diphtheria and this also we had discussed in our classes with specially focusing the clinical features as bull neck appearance and the swelling in the neck and with the image we had discussed this point next question the survey of four cities a b c d reported the total fertility rate as 2.1 2.4 2.6 and 2.8 respectively which city had achieved the desired goal for tfr so what the tfr is it is the total fertility rate means the total number of the children born to a woman in her entire reproductive period and our goal is to achieve the tfr to 2.1 because this will stabilize our population because our goal for net reproduction rate is 1 to achieve the nrr to 1 our tfr should be 2.1 and to achieve the tfr to 2.1 our couple protection rate should be more than 60% so the answer is 2.1 and this concept also we had clearly discussed in our classes this is the screenshot from the class notes where we had specially highlighted the tfr should be dropped to 2.1 to achieve an r to 1 and this is only possible if our couple protection rate is more than 60% next question the orthodolidine test is used for detection of the chlorine demand is assessed by horox separators free residual chlorine it is by chloroscope combined chlorine is by orthodolidine test and if you want to assess the free and combined chlorine separately it is by orthodolidine arsenide test so the correct answer is it is combined chlorine can be detected by orthodolidine at test and this is also the screenshot from our class notes low stationary phase 
is which phase in the demographic cycle we know the different phases of the demographic cycle are and this is also the screenshot from the notes what we had discussed in our classes that the demographic cycle is in five phases the phase of one it's high stationary phase the phase two is early expansion the phase three late expanding phase the phase four is low stationary phase where our birth rate and death rate is very low almost equal so our population is stationary and the phase five it is the reversal phase where population is declining so the correct answer to this question where the low stationary phase coming in phase four of demographic cycle maximum money under pmj yojana is 5 lakhs and this already we had discussed with the logo of pmj that is pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana and where the maximum benefit which has been a given to a family per year is up to 5 lakhs total number of the children born to a reproductive female is calculated by now these are different demographic vital indicators general fertility rate is the total number of the live births per 1000 reproductive age group women means between 15 to 45 years total fertility rate is the total number of the live children born to a woman in her entire reproductive phase the gross reproductive rate is total number of the girl live children born to a woman in her entire reproductive phase and net reproduction rate is that out of these girl children born alive how many girl children are remaining alive till their own reproduction is net reproduction rate and this we had already again discussed as the various vital indicators of the demography as crude birth rate crude death rate general fertility rate general marital fertility rate total fertility rate gross reproduction and net reproduction rate and there are few population indicators also which we had also discussed as a sex ratio dependency ratio population density and literacy rate so here the correct answer to this question is the total fertility rate health worker has two open vials one each of the dpt and mr vaccine now what is done next as you know as per the guideline of open vial policy it is applicable for the vial which are in multi dose vial form what it means it means those vaccines which are in the powdered form if we are dissolving them with a suitable diluent we should be using them within 4 hours otherwise we have to discard and we know that dpt vaccine is a multi dose vial while mr vaccine it is in a powdered form we have to dissolve with distilled water before its use so if a open vial is with us with the dpt and mr so we can use the dpt for the next 28 days but we have to discard the mr vial which cannot be used beyond 4 hours so with this concept so options are discard the both vials no use both the vials we cannot use both the vials also discard the dp uh, t vial and use the mr vial no we cannot use the mr vial discard the mr and use the dpt vial this is the correct answer and this concept we had also discussed in our uh, lectures that it is the open vial policy which is applicable for multi dose vials like the dpt tt hepatitis b td and the pentavalent vaccines and we have to use within 28 days of their opening provided the cold chain is properly maintained the vaccine is a withdrawal with aseptic precautions and vial should not be merged in the water and the date of opening is written on a vial when all these guidelines are fulfilled then only we can uh, use these open uh, vials especially the multi dose vials within next 4 weeks another question based on the same concept vaccine follows the open vial policy 
Now BCG vaccine as it is the powdered form dissolved in normal saline so not following the open vial policy. Pentavalent it's a, a multi-dose vial in the liquid format yes follows the open vial policy. Japanese encephalitis again it is in the powdered form dissolved in uh, phosphate saline buffer again to be used within four hours so not following the open vial policy. MMR vaccine again it is in the powdered form dissolved in normal saline so it is sorry dissolved in a distilled water so again it is not following the open vial policy so the correct answer for this is it is pentavalent vaccine which vaccine has zero conversion time less than incubation a period for that disease now flu vaccine flu the incubation period is a very short it is less than a seven days only and whenever we are giving a vaccine minimum five to seven days are required for antibodies to develop and for some uh, vaccines it might be requiring two to four weeks also so flu is not a possible now measles as we know that the incubation period of the measles is 10 to 14 days and if we give the vaccine within the first three days of an exposure within the next seven days the good amount of antibodies are produced so the antibodies are produced means the zero conversion from the zero negative individual to the zero positive individual is in less than incubation period of that particular disease so yes this is possible now rubella again here the vaccine is taking around two to four weeks time for good amount of antibodies to develop and this is same for the mumps vaccine so here the correct answer for this is measles and uh, this concept again we had uh, clearly discussed in uh, our uh, live lectures as well as online classes and the mobile applications that whenever we are giving the measles vaccination it can be the pre-exposure means before the exposure of a child to a affected individual we are giving the measles vaccine as per the routine a schedule in the two doses the first dose we are giving at 9 to 12 a month and the second dose we are giving at one and a half year while post exposure prophylaxis we can give the measles vaccine if we are giving within three days of an exposure this way especially highlighted and uh, because within the next seven days the good amount of antibodies are produced or if a child is immunocompromised in that condition we are giving immunoglobulins so this is about the measles prophylaxis Now, worker responsible for active malaria surveillance. It's a very commonly asked questions, repeatedly asked in the examination, and the correct answer you all know it is multi-purpose worker male. But as here they had not mentioned the male or female, so the answer to this question is multi-purpose workers. And we had already discussed this point also so many times while discussing the functions of multi-purpose workers that they are responsible for the treatment of the common diseases as they are posted at the sub-center where we don't have the medical officer so they are treating all the individuals who are coming with some basic problems to sub-centers they are also giving the immunization responsible for chlorination of the well water we highlighted the point that the active malaria surveillance is the most important function of these multi-purpose workers in addition to some other workers which we have discussed in great detail in our classes. Lowest center where patient can go. We know as per our healthcare system we had some workers and the centers in the village like in ICDS centers and the workers we had as ASHA workers, village health guides and traditional path attendants. Then we have the sub-centers, primary health centers, community health centers and onwards. Now here as ICDS centers or sub-centers are not in the option, so the lowest center where the patient can go is primary health center. This is caused by given a mosquito and you can very well identify this mosquito by its a sitting position. It is sitting parallel to the surface without any spots on the body. 
So this is your Culex mosquito. And we know that malaria is caused by Anopheles. The Japanese encephalitis is by Culex mosquito, the dengue, and the Zika virus disease is caused by Aedes mosquito. So as you had identified correctly, this is your Culex mosquito. So your answer is Japanese encephalitis. And this point, we had discussed again in the classes in great detail where we had discussed the various insects with their images and the various diseases caused by these insects as well as that how we can differentiate the various types of mosquitoes, differences in their adults, differences in their eggs, larvas and the pupas in the great detail we had discussed in our classes. Incineration process is used for which color bath? It's again a repeatedly asked question and I hope everybody might have marked this answer correctly. There should not be any confusion. Yellow color bath is discarded by incineration while red, white and blue color bath content First, we have to do their disinfection and after the disinfection, we are doing their disposition. So, the yellow content are disposed of by incineration. Which is the principles of primary health centers? Unequal distribution? No. It is actually the equal distribution, equatorial distribution. Appropriate technology, yes. Money, it is not a principle of primary health centers. And inter country control, no, it's an intersectorial coordination. So, this is again the screenshot from your uh, class lectures that the principles of primary health here it is equitable distribution, community participation, intersectorial coordination, and appropriate technology. And what are the elements of Primary health care, we can remember by a mnemonic elements, just a minor difference from elements to elements, and it is the health education, the locally endemic disease prevention and control, essential drugs, MCH care, immunization, nutrition, treatment of the common diseases, and safe water supply and sanitation. So, we are learning community medicine with mnemonics. So it is very simple and very easy to remember and recall in our examination. Most cost effective screening test for cervical cancer. Now here there is some controversy in the question. Some students are saying the question was which is the best screening test for the cervical cancer. And the, some students are saying it was the most cost effective screening test. So, my dear friends, if the question is the most cost effective screening test, then your answer from the given choices is Lugol's IOD. Because this is performed at the primary health center and a minimal cost is required. And if the question was which is the best screening test for the cervical cancer, then your answer should be pap smear. So, Remember one point that answer changes with the question as well as with the given choices. If you see that what are the various screening tests we are doing for a cervical cancer and this we discuss in great detail that uh, in the periphery at the PSC level we can do the via test and the willy test. So this is an image of a via test where we are applying the acetic acid on the cervix after exposing by putting the cusco speculum and unhealthy area where nuclear chromatin material is more so it is being precipitated by acetic acid and we find the aceto white patch so if the aceto white patch is visible after applying the acetic acid it means that area is suspicious and we have to do the further evaluation now if we are Applying the Lugol's iodine, the test is called as a Willy test, that visual inspection of the cervix after Lugol's iodine. Here, the interpretation is different from the wire test. And here, the concept is that healthy tissues or the healthy cells, they are having more of the glycogen. 
Because if it is a suspicious pre malignant cells, they are rapidly proliferating and they are utilizing their glycogen. And this Lewal sardine, it is forming a purplish blue color with um, starch material, which is deficient in unhealthy cell and which is present in good amount in healthy cell. So if we paint the cervix with Lewal sardine and we find that purplish blue color is there, so this is your healthy area. And if we are the colorless patch is there and this area is a suspicious which is not having any color so if we find the suspicious patch as a colorless after applying the lugol sardine and we find a white patch as suspicious after applying the acetic acid then we have to do the further evaluation and these are very simple tests they can be performed at the PSC and it is not requiring any microscope, it is not requiring any expert cytologist for the reporting. But if we want to say that which is the best screening test, then definitely the answer should be the pep smear. And here we are taking the smear from the ectocervix as well as the endocervix and we are sending it for the cytological investigation. So we are taking the ectocervix smear with the IS spatula and the endocervix smear with the cytobrush and we are sending this for histopathological examination. So definitely for the reporting, we require expert cytologist and microscope is required. So pap smear facilities are available from district hospital onwards. And the further confirmation it is done by colposopic guided cervical biopsy and that is going to give the final answer because screening is not a confirmatory a test. The next question, if you want to know about a recent malaria transmission in area, then preferred indicator is. Now API, it's an annual parasite incidence and this is giving us an idea about appearance of the new cases. But it is not showing that only in the recent past, it can be earlier infection also because the chronic malaria cases can persist. So it is suggestive of malaria transmission. Now ARI annual rate of an infection, it is an indicator of tuberculosis and it is actually the tuberculin conversion index. Now, infant parasite rate, yes, it is an indicator of the recent malaria transmission. And annual blood examination rate, it is giving us an idea about the operational efficiency of a worker. So, these are the various uh, indicators related to the malaria program, which we are discussing in detail as an API, infant parasite rate, annual blood examination rate, slight positivity rate, and spleen rate. A pregnant lady had a rabbit dog bite with minor scratch line of action. Now here they had simply given you this word to confuse because what thought we had in our mind that vaccines are not safe during pregnancy. Yes, some vaccines are not safe, especially the live vaccines, but yes, the kill vaccines or the life-saving vaccines can be given. So obviously, the rabies vaccine is a life-saving vaccine if you are having a doubt about uh, rabies infection. So the question is that a pregnant lady had the rabbit dog bite and with a minor scratch. So this is another clue that giving us an idea that what is the grade of the dog bite because our management depends upon the grade. So if we see that what are the various grades of the dog bite, this is again a screenshot from the notes only, that the grade 1 when there is only the lick on intact skin, the grade 2 where there is a scratch or nibbling on the skin but blood should not be there. Khoon nahi aana chahi. Agar khoon aagya, so that is the grade 3 bite. So grade 2 is the scratch or the nibbling on the skin without blood and the grade 3 is lick on the intact mucous membrane because the single uh, lining uh, layer 
and from this the organism can very well pass and directly enter into the blood circulation. So lick on the intact mucus or membrane or the multiple lacerated wounds or a bite with a blood all are coming in a grade 3. So as per our question it is a grade 2 bite. And how we are going to manage? The management of the grade 1 only the reassurance no treatment is required in the grade 2 we are giving the vaccines only and in the grade 3 we are giving the local care immunoglobulins as well as the vaccine. So coming back to the question that as it is a grade a 2 bite now the options are clean the wound no vaccine. No we are requiring to give the vaccine so this is not a correct option. Clean the wound with the vaccine yes. The clean wound with vaccine and immunoglobulins as grade 2 immunoglobulins are not required or no action is needed. So the correct answer is that we have to clean the wound and give a vaccine because anti-rabies vaccines they are safe in pregnancy. Person reported to ophthalmic OPD with vision of less than 3 by 6 in right eye. So this is one clue. The vision less than 3 by 6 in a right eye and the finger movement and 1 meter distance in a left eye. So in the left eye, it is the finger movement at a 1 meter and the right eye, the vision is less than 3 by 6. His state of the vision is. Now again, there is a little bit controversy in this question because some students were saying that the vision in better eye was 3 by 6. And some students were saying it was less than 3 by 6. So in both the cases, the answer will change. Okay. So if we say that what are the various uh, categories of a blindness? The blindness categories as per the old and the new classifications. As per the old classification, we can say that normal vision is if it is between 6 by 6 to 6 by 18. We can say the low vision if it is less than 6 by 18 to 6 by 60 as per the old uh, classification but as per the new classification it is mild visual impairment. Severe visual impairment when the vision is between less than 6 by 60 to 3 by 60 or it is economic blindness. So those who are saying that it was 3 by 60 in the better eye. So the answer is economic blindness. But most of the students were saying that vision was less than 3 by 60 mentioned in the better eye. So they are coming in the category of uh, social blindness where the vision in the better eye was less than 3 by 60 to 1 by 60. So correct answer for this question is social blindness. The other categories are the manifest blindness if it is less than 1 by 60 to perception of the light present or the absolute blindness when the perception of the light is a present less than perception of the light present to perception of the light absent or unspecified the categories 9 of blindness as per the new guideline. So the correct answer if you consider that the vision in the better eye is less than 3 by 6 in a right eye and finger movement and 1 meter distance in the left eye the answer is social blindness. A cardboard worker is at a risk of. Again, there was a little bit controversy in this question. The some students were saying that this was only the question. The cardboard workers is at a risk of. Now we uh, know that cardboard is being prepared from the sugar cane bagus. So these workers can inhale the sugar cane fibers, and we know that. Pneumoconiosis developing with the sugarcane uh, fibers is bagososis. So the answer is bagososis. Now few students were saying that a question a given was that a cardboard worker who is working in a wood industry for a few years. In that case the agent which is causing the manifestation is the wood dust. And we know that wood dust can cause nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Okay, but still the most of the students were saying that only it was a cardboard worker uh, is at a risk of a which manifestation the question was asked like that. So the answer to this is bag of sauces. A man traveled to Assam and after returning back 
he developed the fever so one clue is that he had gone to assam and after returning developed the fever giddiness and on investigation confirmed to be a case of plasmodium falciparum they are clearly mentioned because in the northeast states the high possibility of plasmodium falciparum infection so what is the treatment of a choice now as we know as per the guidelines of national vector borne disease control program for malaria the drug of choice is a different if the person is living in northeast states or in other states as well as for plasmodium falciparum and for plasmodium vivax now if you see the treatment guidelines this is again i have taken a screenshot from our uh, class lectures that the treatment guideline for plasmodium of falciparum it is equal for the individual living in all the states and it is the chloroquine is the drug of choice with primaquine we are giving as 0.25 mg per kg the body weight to be given for 14 days this is to avoid the relapse cases but if it is a plasmodium falciparum as it is clearly mentioned in our question also so in north east states the drug of choice is artemisinin and in other states it is artesanate sulfadoxin and pyrimethamine and in both the conditions we are giving the single dose of primaquine 0.75 mg per kg but if a lady is pregnant with malaria infection then the drug of choice is different if it is a plasmodium vivax infection then chloroquine is recommended in all the trimesters and primaquine is avoided because it is having some adverse effects but if it is a falciparum infection then in the first trimester the drug of choice is quinine only in all the states and in second and third trimester if it has been confirmed with the falciparum infection then depending upon the geographical location if it is in the northeast states the drug of choice is acetl means artemisinin and in other states artesanate sulfadoxin and pyrimethamine and again primaquine is with help so coming back to the question that the person is returning from the assam from the northeast states and treatment of choice for falciparum is iv artemisinin the doxycycline it is given as prophylaxis the chloroquine is for vivax infection and artesanate sulfadoxin pyrimethamine it is for falciparum in other states other than north east food component help in healing and we all know that vitamin c it is helping in wound healing this question we can say it is having the overlapping with the you know, orthopedics a patient from bihar presented with generalized bone pain and had an excess of fluoride intake he was diagnosed as a fluorosis the fluorosis of the bone is commonly associated with osteosclerosis and here the dental fluorosis is shown in the image and we all know that normal fluoride level it should be around 0.5 to 0.8 ppm in our drinking water the upper limit which is acceptable is up to 1.5 ppm or 1.5 mg per liter if it is between 1.5 to 3 it is causing the dental fluorosis if it is between 3 to 6 it is causing the skeletal fluorosis and if it is more than 10 it is causing the crippling fluorosis and if it is less than 0.5 it is causing dental caries so both the ends are risky the excess as well as the lesser amount is risky for the health and if there is high fluoride content we have to do the defluoridation this is done by nalagonda technique and we are adding the lime alum and the beet powder in uh, order to reduce the fluoride content and if it is the less fluoride content in that area we are using the fluoride containing a toothpaste but remember one point always there is written as a warning uh, signal that fluoride containing toothpaste to be avoided by children why have you ever thought for that the reason is have you ever seen any child brushing the teeth the child is not spitting out the toothpaste the child is swallowing so if you are giving the fluoride containing toothpaste to a child 
who is swallowing that toothpaste, it will leading to accumulation of the fluoride in the body and may cause the symptoms of excess of fluorine in later life. So they should be avoided. A patient with fever was investigated and the peripheral blood smear shows following features. Identify the condition. Now as you could see in the image that there is a ring form is seen in RBCs and the single ring form is visible. One point. And uh, this form is almost covering the half of the size of RBCs, the little bit bigger. So they are in favor of ring form of plasmodium vivex infection. As we had discussed in our classes that how we can differentiate the blood smear of a vivex to the falciparum. In the vivex we are seeing the single ring form while in the falciparum we can see the two or more ring forms are there and their size is smaller. Now if you see their uh, trophozoite form in the vivex the trophozoite form the nucleus is amoeboid in shape and is covering more than two-thirds of the cell while in the falciparum form it is round and it is almost covering the one-third to half of the cell and the most important is the gametes now in the falciparum the gametes are the crescent shaped or banana shaped while in a vivex they are around so in by these features we can differentiate whether it's a vivex infection or falciparum and that's why we all know that we are preparing the two type of the slides uh, for diagnosis of uh, malaria the one slide it is a thick slide where we will be confirming that malaria parasite is there and we are preparing the thin slide then to see that which malaria parasite is there as we had uh, discussed just what is the line of management because it depends upon the parasite species the drug of choice is different for a vivex and falciparum. So answer to this question is it is plasmodium vivex. Patient presented with liver cancer who is working in grain industry that's a groundnut industry for last 15 years the toxin are responsible for this condition. Now we know that the grains are stored and if there is a moisture, they are getting the contamination with a, a fungus, aspergillus of flavors, and which is liberating the toxin that is aflatoxin and it is causing aflatoxicosis. So here the answer to this question is aflatoxicosis. The BOA is the toxin beta oxalyl amino alanin, which is causing the lethargism. Pyrolizidine. It is The toxin which is responsible for epidemic, sorry, a pyrolizidine, it is a toxin which is responsible for endemic ascites. Next question is, patient presented with liver cancer who is working in grain industry for last 15 years, toxin responsible for this condition. We know that uh, grains if they are stored in a moisture environment, they are prone for fungal growth and this is responsible for a condition that is aflatoxicosis because of a toxin aflatoxin. Now some other toxins like BOA, beta oxalyl amino alanine, it is responsible for lethargism. Pyrolizidine, it is responsible for endemic ascites. And a sanguinarine, it is responsible for epidemic dropsy. As we know that PSM is little bit difficult to remember. So we remember them by mnemonics in our classes. And that is very simple, very easy to remember forever. So how we can remember the toxin responsible for epidemic dropsy and endemic ascites? Because that is very commonly asked in examination. So we can remember by a mnemonic. We all know that uh, our friends... Some of them are doing the dental course, BDS course. So you can remember like that is EDS, BDS. Means epidemic dropsy 
it is caused by a toxin that is S is a sanguinary. If you are not able to remember the whole name, you can just remember S is for sanguinary and it is for epidemic adropsy. Now, how you can remember the parolizidine for endemic ascites? We all know that we are using the mobile apps. So, you can remember like EAP or app. So, endemic ascites, it is because of parolizidine. So, in this way, you can remember the toxins. And uh, we have discussed uh, all these food adulteration conditions in detail in our classes. Which level is taking care of school health in a rural area? We know that in school, we are doing six monthly health checkup of students and this is done by medical officer. And we know that medical officer is posted lowest center as primary health center. So, sub-center is not an option because sub-center is not having the medical officer. Here only the multipurpose workers are posted. Now, community health center it is having the specialist they are involved in other activities and sub-district hospital is further above the community health center. So, here the correct answer to this is primary health center. A 30-year-old lady presented to the OPD with complaints of lower abdominal pain with history of copper tea insertion 3 years back. So, in a lengthy question, we should try to identify the keywords as well as we have to look for the image. Now, if you look for the image, if you can appreciate, they had given us that this is the bladder and this is the a uterus longitudinal section and this is somewhere they had mentioned is IUCD. So, they are talking about this shadow which is looking like an IUCD. So, they are asking something related to the pelvic area with IUCD. And uh, quickly, we see the option that it is removed by. So, they are asking that how we have to remove this displaced property. So, by the image and by the options, this is in our mind. Now, we have to find out at which place this property is displaced. So, with this thought, we have to look for the keywords in our question. A 30-year-old lady, okay, so lady is in the reproductive age. Presented to the NOPD with complaint of pain in an abdomen and history of copper tea insertion three years back. So, they had confirmed that copper tea was inserted three years back. On ultrasound investigation, it was confirmed that copper tea is extra uterine. So, they had mentioned that it is outside the uterus near the ovary. So, a job is done. It is outside the uterus. So, we cannot remove by hysteroscope because this is the scope of uterine cavity. We cannot remove by colposcope because this is the scope of cervix, not by pulling the thread because thread also might have gone along with the property. So, the correct answer to this is laparoscope. So, by putting the laparoscope in the abdominal cavity, we can take it out. And in our uh, lectures, we had seen these images showing the displaced IUCDs. Now, if you see the image number one, this is showing the normal position of the copper tea. This is the longitudinal ultrasound section and image number two, it is the transverse ultrasound section. Image number three, it is showing the displaced copper tea, but this is inside the uterus moving towards myometria. It can be removed by hysteroscope. Now, image number four, it is showing the displaced copper tea down in the cervical canal and if the thread is visible, it can be removed by pulling the thread. And if the thread is not visible, then it can be removed by hysteroscope. Image number 5, it is showing the IUCD with gestational sac. This is in a case who is presenting with pregnancy with IUCD in place. And if the thread is visible, then simply by pulling the thread, we can remove the device. Now, remember one point. Forever that we are not putting the hysteroscope in pregnant uterus because uterus is soft, we may perforate. So, it is removed by simply pulling the thread. And then we have to decide whether the patient wants to continue the pregnancy or patient wants to abort. Now, image number 6, it is the x-ray of a lady where copper T is displaced and this is a transverse plane. Because barium sulfate is present in the copper tea, so it is 
clearly visible in x-ray also and you could see the image number 8 it is IOCD but it is not in copper IOCD as you could see the bulge in the vertical arm so this is actually the capsule which is containing hormones so this is an image of Merana or LNG 20 which is again displaced and this is again an image of Merana which is displaced so these are the different uh, images of uh, displaced or misplaced IUCDs and how we are removing we had already discussed the next question is which workers are more prone for fever in the given observation now this diagram I had prepared with the information which I can, I can collect from the students that pie chart and the bar chart was given and, and we know that uh, pie chart and the bar chart they are the qualitative data presentation methods where we don't uh, require any calculation by simple observation we can assess that which value is more so you could see that uh, value covering 60 percent is by the farmers having the fever possibility and if you can see the bar chart also the height of the bar is more for the farmers so here the answer to this question that which workers are more prone for fever are farmers vouchere bankrupt eye cannot be seen in now commonly the vouchere bankrupt eye are seen in the lymphatics and we can uh, see in uh, blood smears also especially the microphilarians but sometimes they are also seen in urine ascitic fluid and the pleural fluid as well as the pericardial fluid but very rarely they are seen in salivary secretions so among the given choices the best suitable answer is saliva a child presented with history of a diarrhea for the last 12 hours severely dehydrated and unable to drink so here the keywords are that baby is severely dehydrated and unable to drink so obviously if the baby is not able to drink then we have to manage by giving the iv flows and this we had discussed in our classes also that in the severe diarrhea we are giving an iv fluid total iv fluid amount is 100 ml per kg to be given in two divided doses the first pass 30 ml per kg to be given in half to one hour and the next 70 ml per kg to be given in three to six hours depending upon the age of the baby and the fluid what we will prefer either the diarrhea treatment solution if it is not available then ringer lactate not available the normal saline but remember five percent dextrose is not used for treatment of diarrhea because it is not having any electrolytes so the answer to this question the ors is not possible because baby is not able to bring IV lingual lactate, yes. Normal saline, if a ringal lactate is there, we have to prefer over the normal saline. Dextrose, we are not using. The correct answer to this question is it is IV ringal lactate a solution. Given condition is due to the deficiency of. If you can see the image, the baby is looking like the bulging abdomen looking like a edematous baby and this is a classical picture of Vashyaka baby because you could see the uh, hair texture is also not good and we know that Vashyaka is having only the deficiency of the protein the energy is not deficient like Marasmus now we had seen these two images in our classes also when the Marasmic baby are having the deficiency of the energy and the protein both so here the muscle mass is also reduced while in Kwashiaka babies the energy is normal but protein is less so they are having hyperproteinemia and because of that there is edema. So here the correct answer is that only protein deficiency. Most common cancer in head and neck area in India is oral cancer. As we know that in India the people are in a habit of eating the tobacco with all the katha chunas and this material is under the cheek throughout the day 
and they are so smart that they can even drink with this they can eat they can talk they can sleep everything they can do with the material in place so it is causing the constant irritation leading to the cancer developing and uh, this condition is so miserable that some youngsters they have to lose their life or after the surgery they had to cover their face throughout the life with a towel or hanky just to um, hide this deformity now the females are also not behind they are following all the characters or the features of what the male are doing so they had also started eating this tobacco product and it is reflecting in the form of infertility in their uh, uh, reproductive age group or those who uh, they conceive they had abortions or even if uh, they continue till term the baby has the vitriol symptoms baby says mom you had used the tobacco throughout the uh, nine months you had given me the tobacco now i have one tobacco baby shows the tobacco withdrawal symptoms so it is very very a dangerous a condition and uh, we had discussed in detail that what are the various uh, causes of cancer in our classes that in a male world the lung is the most common cause of cancer while in india it is the oral cancer and in female both in india and the world it is the breast cancer if you see the overall most common cancer in the world now the breast cancer is on top in elderly male it is the prostatic cancer the young male it is testicular cancer occupational cancer seen in india it is the skin cancer and the cancer in female in rural area is still the cervical cancer next is a 30 year old person is coming from china with suspected covid symptoms now test for confirmation Now there should not be any confusion because for past one and half year we all are facing corona pandemic, and some of you might have undergone this testing either for confirmation or for the screening, and the answer is none other than RT PCR. Identify the virus. Now if you could see uh, carefully, now we can see the glycoprotein of one twenty, that is the docking protein, which helps in attachment of the virus to the host cell membrane transmembrane protein through which virus is entering through the membrane then we are having the nucleic acid protein 7 with the help of the protease reverse transcriptase and the integrase enzyme it is functioning and uh, this we had uh, already discussed in detail in our classes this is a screenshot of our class lectures as well as uh, the online lectures and uh, the mist app applications all these points has been discussed in great detail so correct answer to this is virus is none other than hiv virus the first step to be done for immunization survey in an area we know that immunization survey is done by cluster random sampling and the age group of the children selected are between 12 to 23 months of the age so we have to find out the children of the last one year vaccinated and then now we'll see that for how many vaccines they are left and we are giving them the remaining left out a vaccines so answer is that vaccinated children in last year doctors are doing a work and the extra curricular activities the study design plan to know for future requirement of the doctors which are doing an extra curricular activity identify the analysis now here basically we are comparing the uh, two groups the one are the doctors who are doing their work with extra curricular activities and another group is the doctors who are only doing the work and we are uh, finding out that which is a better in terms of overall cost effectiveness and uh, if we say that those doctors who are doing their work with extra curricular activities if they are found to be better than we are um, finding their future requirement so this analysis system is systematic analysis in the cost benefit only we are comparing the how much cost we had uh, uh, invested and how much uh, in refund money we are having so the difference in the investment and what return we had it is cost benefit analysis cost effective means how much money we had invested and how much benefit we are having in terms of the results like we had invested in the vaccine manufacturing and how much reduction in the maternal mortality or how much reduction from the deaths in the corona patients we are having 
that is cost effective analysis network analysis is a, a chain of events leading to the end point and systematic analysis is comparison of the two activities in terms of their overall cost effectiveness so yeah, the correct answer is systematic analysis a case control study was done to know the risk factor of obesity two groups formed will be now here they had clearly mentioned that we are conducting the case control study if we see the study design which you had already discussed in our classes this is the screenshot from our class notes that if you are doing a case control study then we are making the two groups one is the cases where the disease or the uh, outcome is present another are the control where the outcome is absent and here the outcome what we are taking is the obesity and then we have to go in a backward direction to ask for the risk factor which can be their food intake which can be their exercise related which can be their habit of the smoking so this is the study design of the case control why if we want to do the cohort study which is a forward study so we'll start the study where the individuals are healthy so we'll make the two groups one is exposed another is the non exposed we are exposing them to the risk factor waiting for the some time for the disease to develop so this is your cohort study so coming back to the question what they had asked is the two groups in a case control study to find out the risk factors for the obesity will be the patients with obesity and without the obesity not the person with or without the online food because these are the risk factors not the person with or without the exercise because this is again a risk factor not the person with or without the smoking because this is again the risk factor so correct is patient with and without obesity demographic bonus is now actually what is demographic bonus the country which had the high fertility rate in past few years suppose more than 20 years back if the country is having the high fertility rate and for the last 20 years with the use of contraceptives they are reducing their fertility rate so now the non working population is reducing and those who had born more than 20 years before now they had entered in a age group of more than 15 years so they are now working so our dependency ratio is reducing we had a lesser number of the less than 15 years of population we had a more number of 15 to 65 years of the population this means this is the bonus because of high past fertility rate so the correct answer to this is it is not related to population density the reduction in the population in last few years due to contraception yes this could be the answer fertility rate no it is literacy no so here the correct answer is reduction in the population in pa last a few years due to contraception reproductive health promoting agency in world is it is un fpa united nation a fund for population activities now this is funding developing countries to carry out their different activities related to reproductive health which agency gives support to achieve sustainable developmental goals we know that sustainable developmental goals are given by united nations for for a year of uh, 15 years from 2016 till 2030 and this is for overall well being of uh, society or whole a world and there are the 17 uh, goals are there and only the goal number 3 is directly health related and their branch that is undp united nation development project is helping the developing countries to achieve their sustainable goals so correct answer is undp agency funding tuberculosis program in india is united nation agency for international development it is funding india to carry out the control activities related to various infectious diseases as well as non communicable diseases so friends these were 41 questions which i could collect and in the last i can say success only comes to those who dare to attempt and as you all dare to attempt your examination so yes definitely you all are going to achieve the success and we all are waiting at finishing line to welcome so with these words 
Wishing you all the very best for your life. Good luck. Bye-bye.